Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokov. Please make sure to like this video. In this video, we're going to be discussing something called clonal selection. Clonal selection is a process that lymphocytes have to go through um, in order to ensure that they don't attack your normal self cells. Because obviously, if a cell belongs to you, it's your own cell, we want our immune system to leave those cells alone and not attack them. If that system fails, then we would develop what's called autoimmune condition. But before we get into that, let's have an understanding of antigens and immunogens. So sometimes these terms are used interchangeably, but they're technically not interchangeable. So what's the definition of an antigen? An antigen is a substance or a molecule. It's normally a protein or a small peptide that binds with lymphocytes or induces the production of lymphocytes, meaning an immune reaction. So let's break this down. Number one, it's a substance, normally a protein or peptide, that binds with a lymphocyte. That's a very broad, general definition. But the key word here is or. Or induces the production of an immune reaction. So an antigen is just a protein that's able to interact and bind with uh, a lymphocyte. That does not necessarily mean it will cause an immune reaction. So some antigens, uh, lymphocytes will bind with them, and nothing happens. Those are generally our own self-antigens. Other antigens can induce an immune response. And so that leads to what we call an immunogen. An immunogen is an antigen that elicits an immune reaction, an immune response. Okay? It is immunogenic. All right? So antigens are any protein that bind with a lymphocyte, and it doesn't matter. They can cause an immune reaction, or some don't. An immunogen is an antigen that always causes an immune reaction. Okay, so just to make those terms perfectly clear. Let's look over here at these pictures. So let's suppose this cell right here is a healthy cell that belongs to us. So you're watching this video. Imagine, let's say, your own liver. One of the cells of your liver, let's say, a hepatocyte. That hepatocyte belongs to you. Now, the body should have a way for your immune system to be able to recognize your own cells as belonging to you. So imagine for one moment that you're watching one of these old movies like Mel Gibson's The Patriot. Uh, this is a movie where the colonial Americans are fighting for independence from the British. How does a colonial American know who's American and who's a British soldier? And vice versa, how does the British soldier know who's British and who's colonial? Well, they wear uniforms, right? Something on the surface that tells you whose army they belong to, right? In the same way, these cells should have something similar. And what they have is a cell surface protein that displays a normal self antigen. This is like a flag that says, I belong to this person. I'm not foreign. Leave me alone. And so as long as any cell displays a normal self antigen, immune cells will come. They may interact with this protein, this antigen, but they'll leave it alone. And so this healthy self cell is left alone, and that's called tolerance. And it makes sense. We should have tolerance of our own self cells. We shouldn't have the immune system attack those cells. And so you see here an example of an antigen that does not elicit an immune reaction. So this is not immunogenic. It's not an immunogen. It's a self antigen, and it's a normal self antigen. Now down here we have the opposite case. Uh, and this could be a number of cell types. Um, this could be a foreign cell. So for example, um, if you get a tissue transplant that wasn't tested, it belonged to another person, so that is not your own antigen. That's a foreign antigen. It could be a parasite or a bacterium. Those are obviously foreign as well. But it also could be your own cell that's become abnormal. So maybe that cell has been infected with a virus. Maybe that cell has become cancerous. Either way, it's an abnormal cell. Now, whether it's foreign or infected is irrelevant. It's going to display an abnormal antigen. And that could be an abnormal self-antigen. That would be if it was virally infected or cancerous. Or it could just be a foreign antigen if it belonged to another person, or if it's bacterial or a parasite. 
And so the immune system does not recognize this antigen as belonging to the host. And so this lymphocyte is going to come over here. It's going to interact and bind with this antigen. And it's going to realize that this cell does not belong to us or it's abnormal. And so it's going to attack the cell and it's going to cause it to commit apoptosis, which is basically controlled cell suicide. It basically kills that cell. Now that we understand this, we can move on to talking about clonal selection, which has three stages, uh, two major ones. The first is positive selection, the second is negative selection, and the third is really just the migration to secondary lymphoid tissue, where these cells take up residence and just await uh, an immune reaction. All right. So again, the formation of lymphocytes occurs in the red bone marrow. It doesn't matter if it's a B lymphocyte or a T lymphocyte or a natural killer cell, they all form in the red bone marrow. Now the B lymphocytes, the ones destined for this lineage, uh, they not only form in the bone marrow, but they also mature there. So they don't have to move anywhere else to mature. They mature in the red bone marrow, and then once this process is complete, they then migrate to secondary lymphoid tissue. T lymphocytes are formed in the red bone marrow, but they then go to the thymus for maturation. So they mature in the thymus. And then the same thing, T lymphocytes will undergo these processes right here, and then they'll migrate to secondary lymphoid tissue. But regardless of whether you've got a B or a T cell, they both have to first undergo what's called positive selection. And to pass this test, these cells have to be able to bind to foreign antigen. Okay, think about what the function of an immune cell is. Okay, these immune cells, they're designed to bind to foreign antigen, right? If these cells cannot bind to a foreign antigen, well, then they're useless. They wouldn't be able to perform their job, right? It would negate the function of even being an immune cell to bind to a foreign antigen. So the ones that don't, you can see these number three and four over here, uh, these are destroyed. Basically, the uh, cells cause them to commit apoptosis and they die. I mean, if they don't bind foreign antigen, there's no point in continuing their production. So these two cells right here, numbers one and two, that bound foreign antigen, they do their job, but they still have to pass one more test. So they come over here to negative selection, phase two. And the point here is it doesn't do a lot of good if an immune cell binds foreign antigen, but it also binds self antigen. Remember, we want tolerance of our own self antigen. So if this immune cell binds self antigen, that would cause an autoimmune reaction and we don't want that. So those cells should be destroyed. So look here, the first cell uh, not only binds foreign antigen, but when it undergoes negative selection, it also binds self antigen. That doesn't do what's any good. So this cell is basically committed to cell suicide, apoptosis. But the second cell that bound foreign antigen does not bind to the normal self antigen. And so it's able to tolerate our own self cells. So this is the cell that we want to keep and potentially replicate if there actually is an immune response to something later on. So the second cell here is the only one to survive. Numbers three and four didn't survive positive selection and number one didn't survive negative selection, leaving only the second cell. And then this is the cell that would then migrate to secondary lymphoid tissue. And again, depending on where the maturation occurred, this could either be a B cell if it was in the bone marrow or a T cell if it was in the thymus. And there's also a similar process for natural killer cells or NK cells. Um, it's just that natural killer cells are not a part of the adaptive immune system. They're part of the innate immune system, but they still uh, should not be able to bind and activate to self antigen. Okay, so hopefully the process of clonal selection makes sense. To really understand this, you do have to understand the difference between a self antigen and an abnormal self antigen or foreign antigen. But hopefully this process makes sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.